Welcome to DX Sudoku training video number 103. In this video, an improved version of Bowman's Bingo puzzle solving technique will be demonstrated. The first part of the video will demonstrate the basic way of doing Bowman's Bingo. The second part of the video will demonstrate a more advanced and improved version of Bowman's Bingo. Here is a list of additional related videos you may want to watch after watching this video. Bowman's Bingo is a type of chaining technique working with bivalue cells. The basic algorithm begins by choosing a starting cell and starting candidate for the chaining sequence. The starting cell and starting candidate of the chaining sequence is an assumption. The assumption could have three results. If the assumption is true, it may solve the puzzle. If the assumption is false, it may end with a contradiction. And if the assumption is inconclusive, the chaining sequence will stall. This improved Bowman's algorithm uses special rules to determine which cell and starting candidate to use as the assumption of the chaining sequence. Also, the improved Bowman's bingo will show you what to do when your chaining sequence stalls. This improved way of doing Bowman's bingo is extremely powerful. You will be able to solve puzzles you thought you would never be able to solve. However, there is a case where this new improved Bowman's Bingo technique will not work. And this is when a puzzle has no bivalue cells to be considered as starting cells of the chaining sequence. For ultra extreme puzzles not having any bivalue cells, the brute force puzzle solving technique will be needed. Bowman's Bingo has a lot of negative connotations with some Sudoku solvers. Some people consider using Bowman's to be a form of guessing, trial and error, or even cheating. Bowman's bingo is a chaining technique, so I'm not sure I 100% agree with this negative connotation. All chaining techniques require choosing a starting cell and a starting candidate. Bowman's bingo is no different. As with all chaining techniques, some starting cells bear fruit, while other starting cells do not. Once you have the chaining sequence, there's no guessing. There's no trial and error. The chaining sequence is pure logic. The chaining sequence itself is the logic used to solve the puzzle, not how the initial starting cell was chosen. Whether or not Bowman's Bingo is guessing, trial and error, or just cheating is a topic of debate. You will have to decide which side of the debate you prefer to be on. I use Bowman's Bingo to solve harder puzzles when I'm stuck or if I want to solve a puzzle quickly. I find using Bowman's Bingo to solve a puzzle to be just as rewarding as any other puzzle solving technique. So you will have to decide if using Bowman's is morally okay for you. In the next section of this video, I will demonstrate what I consider to be guessing or trial and error for solving a puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. Some people claim Bowman's Bingo is guessing or just trial and error. Here is solving the puzzle using what I would call guessing. Assume 1 comma 3 equals 2. Assume 4 comma 8 equals 6. Assume 8 comma 4 equals 7. Assume 4 comma 1 equals 3. Assume 2 comma 6 equals 9. Assume 7 comma 3 equals 3. Assume 2 comma 7 equals 6. Assume 6 comma 5 equals 1. But now we have a contradiction. We have two cells having a naked single with the number 2 in block 5. What I mean by contradiction comes from one of the two house rules being violated. The first house rule is you must have one of each number 1 through 9 in each of the 27 houses. And the second house rule is you cannot have the same number twice in the same house. So having two of the same number is a violation of our assumption our puzzle has a valid solution grid, hence a contradiction. We undo the assumption in step 8, and for step 9 we assume 6, 5 is set to the number 9. Again, we end up with a contradiction. We have two cells having the number 5 in block 6. Both choices for cell 6, 5 result in a contradiction. What this means is, one or more of the seven previous assumptions must be wrong. This is what I would call true guessing, or true trial and error. To proceed from here, we would use trial and error to come up with a completely different set of assumptions until we get it right. This is not how Bowman's Bingo works. Here is the basic common algorithm for doing Bowman's Bingo. 
We begin by highlighting all the by value cells currently in the puzzle. At this point in the puzzle, we have 22 by value cells. So we therefore have a total of 44 different starting candidates to use in our chaining sequence. Each assumption choice in our chaining sequence has three possible results. Our chaining sequence solves the puzzle, or our chaining sequence ends in a contradiction, or our chaining sequence stalls. I will first demonstrate a chaining sequence that results in solving the puzzle. We will begin by using cell 1, 3 as our starting cell. Step 1 in our chaining sequence is assuming cell 1, 3 does not have a value of 2 as indicated by the 2 candidate being colored in purple. All the cells having a possible 2 candidate are now highlighted. Next, we add our first round of strong links to our chaining sequence. A strong link is a relationship between two candidates where if one candidate is off or false, the other candidate is on or true. Since the 2 in cell 1, 3 is off, the 6 in cell 1, 3 is on. And since the 2 in cell 1, 3 is off, the 2 in cell 1, 4 is on. And since the 2 in cell 1, 3 is off, the 2 in cell 3, 3 is on. A candidate being colored purple means the candidate is off. And if a candidate is colored in green, we are pretending that that number is the chosen value of the cell. Next, we add a round of weak links to our chaining sequence. A weak link is a relationship between two candidates where if one candidate is on or true, the other candidate is off or false. A total of six weak links were added to the chaining sequence. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth weak link added to the chaining sequence. At this point, we would keep going until every candidate in the puzzle was colored in green or purple. But most Sudoku software does not support candidate level coloring. And this way of doing the chaining sequence is also time consuming. So I will start over using a chaining sequence method that works with most Sudoku software and is especially good with cell phone apps. I reset the puzzle. For this method to work, each open cell must have all the pencil marks showing. Most Sudoku software supports the ability to fill in all the pencil marks for you. The cell phone app chaining method works as follows. For weak links, we simply remove a candidate from a cell. A candidate missing from a cell means it is off. For strong links, a single remaining candidate indicates a strong link. A single candidate in a cell indicates that it is on. Again, I will first demonstrate a chaining sequence that results in solving the puzzle. We begin by using cell 1, 3 as our starting cell. As before, our chaining sequence begins by assuming cell 1, 3 does not have a value of 2. So we remove the 2 candidate from cell 1, 3. As you can see, a strong link pops up because the 6 is the only remaining candidate. At this point, we are pretending cell 1, 3 has been set to a value of 6. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. Next step, highlight all the open cells having a possible 6 candidate. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. Highlight all the 1 cells. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. Highlight all the 5 cells. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. Highlight all the nine cells. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. Highlight all the six cells. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. Highlight all the seven cells. Identify additional candidates to remove from cells. Remove additional candidates. The chaining sequence is now complete. At this point, we search each of the 27 houses to make sure each house has one of each number 1 through 9. And we make sure no house has two of the same number. And we make sure no house has any empty cells. Everything looks good, so we choose the one remaining candidate as the value of each open cell. 
the puzzle's solution grid is now complete. Next, I will demonstrate what happens when the chaining sequence ends with a contradiction. This time, for our chaining sequence, we assume cell 1,3 does not have a value of 6. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. As you can see, our chaining sequence ends with a contradiction. We have two 5s in the house making up row 4. At this point, we need to choose our assumption number as the value of our starting cell. So we keep hitting the undo button until our starting cell is restored. Our starting cell is restored. As per the algorithm's instructions, we now choose the number 6 as the value of the starting cell. Next, I will demonstrate what happens when a chaining sequence stalls. For demonstrating when a chaining sequence stalls, we will assume cell 3, 2 does not have a value of 6. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. As you can see, our chaining sequence has stalled. What this means is, we have no way to continue the chaining sequence because there are no additional strong or weak links. It means our assumption may or may not be true. In other words, our assumption is inconclusive. Later in this video, I will discuss the improved Bowman's Bingo algorithm. I will show you how to move beyond a stalled chaining sequence. Next, I am going to talk about this puzzle's chaining results in more detail. As stated, at this point in the puzzle, we have 22 bivalue cells and 44 starting candidates. Here are the results of all 44 possible Bowman's chaining sequences. 16 assumptions had a chaining sequence which solved the puzzle. 16 assumptions had a chaining sequence which ended in a contradiction. Once the starting cell got set, it solved the puzzle. 6 resulted in a contradiction which allowed the starting cell to be set but a second Bowman's was needed to solve the puzzle, and six resulted in the chaining sequence stalling. In this puzzle, each of the six candidate assumptions that stalled, the other candidate in the starting cell resulted in a contradiction. So all 22 starting cells, that is 100%, resulted in doing something positive in solving the puzzle. There were no errors in any of the chaining sequences. Every starting cell was successful. However, when using Bowman's on ultra-extreme puzzles, there are times when the chaining sequence for every candidate in every bivalue cell stalls. The improved Bowman's algorithm will get around this problem. Next, I will discuss an interesting feature I found in one of the chaining sequences I used in creating this part of the video. For this special feature demonstration, I will begin the chaining sequence by assuming 6, 4 is not equal to 2. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. At this point in the chaining sequence, it appears our chaining sequence has stalled. But take a closer look at cell 3, 9 and cell 6, 9. These two cells form a naked pair. We can use this naked pair like a group node strong link in our chaining sequence and use it to remove the 6 candidate in cell 8, 9. We remove the 6th candidate in cell 8, 9. The rest of the chaining sequence easily solves the puzzle. When using the cell phone method of doing chaining sequences, you can use other puzzle solving techniques to create group node strong links for eliminating candidates. Using other puzzle solving techniques in our chaining sequences makes me think Bowman's is more than just guessing. Next, I'm going to demonstrate the first part of the improved Bowman's Bingo puzzle solving technique. Consider the ultra extreme puzzle now showing. As you can see, this puzzle has some meat to it. I have updated the algorithm notes to include the first part of the improvement. Which starting cell and starting candidate to use is now determined by a set of guidelines. All the by value cells are now highlighted. For each possible starting candidate, we determine the number of values set in the chaining sequence after the first and second round of strong and weak links. Consider cell 2, 1 and the assumption cell 2, 1 is not equal to 6. For this candidate, the first and second set of weak and strong links result in having 7 cells set to a value in our chaining sequence. The cells that would be set if we made this assumption are now highlighted in green. 
Next, assuming cell 2 comma 1 is not equal to 9 results in one cell being set. You get the idea. I'm going to determine the counts for the remaining other assumptions. I'll be right back. I'm back. Here are the counts for each assumption in parentheses. Cell 2 comma 9 not equal to 5 had the highest count with a total of 9. Now that we have determined 2 comma 9 not equal to 5 had the highest count, we choose it as our starting candidate for our chaining sequence. We choose 2 comma 9 not equal to 5 as our starting assumption for our chaining sequence. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. I found something interesting. Take a closer look at the house making up row 3. There's a 237 naked triple that can be used as a group strong link to eliminate three candidates from the row. Using additional puzzle solving techniques to form a group node strong link can be used in other puzzle solving techniques involving chaining. I'm going to continue with the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. As you can see, our chaining sequence has completely solved the puzzle. Next, we check to make sure there are no contradictions or empty cells. Everything looks good, so we choose the one remaining candidate as the value of the cell. The puzzle's solution grid is now complete. I did the chaining sequences for all 20 possible starting candidates. Here are the results. As you can see, every chaining sequence stalled except the one for the starting candidate having the most number of cells set. It turns out the candidate setting the most cells in the first two sets of strong and weak links is almost always the right solution path. I am reluctant to say always, but this has been my experience. Next, I'm going to demonstrate the improvement for handling the case when all chaining sequences stall. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the by-value cells are currently highlighted. We determined which starting candidate to use for our chaining sequence. We choose 6, 6, not equal to 3 as our starting assumption for our chaining sequence. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. I found an X-Wing group node strong link. Candidates are removed. I'm going to go off and continue the chaining sequence. Our chaining sequence stalls. To get around this, we are going to make a second assumption and create a second chaining sequence. The way this works is as follows. Our first assumption was cell 6, 6 not equal to 3. We determined a starting candidate to use for our second chaining sequence based on some guidelines. Say we choose 8, 3 as our starting cell for our second chaining sequence. If the chaining sequence for one of the two candidates solves the puzzle, this means our original assumption was correct. If the chaining sequence for both candidates results in a contradiction, this means our original assumption was a contradiction. I updated our algorithm notes to include new guidelines for adding additional chaining sequences. For each starting cell, for each candidate, we determine the number of cells set by the first two sets of strong and weak links. We choose the starting cell with the highest combined total number of cells set for both candidates as the starting cell of an additional chaining sequence. Out of 22 cells, cell 8, 3 has the most set by both candidates with a total of 24 cells. So 8, 3 not equal to 2 is our second chaining sequence assumption. I'm going to go off and do the chaining sequence. I'll be right back. I'm back. Our chaining sequence ended with a contradiction. We have two twos in the house making up column 1. So we hit the undo button until cell 8, 3 is restored. Cell 8, 3 is restored. Next, we are going to choose the other candidate in cell 8, 3 as the starting candidate. We choose 8, 3 not equal to 5 as our second chaining sequence assumption. I'll be right back. I'm back. Our chaining sequence ended with a contradiction. We have two 3s in the house making up column 1. Since both our chaining sequences ended with a contradiction for by value cell 8, 3, this means our original assumption for cell 6, 6, not equal to 3, is also a contradiction. According to our algorithm notes, we need to set cell 6, 6 to have a value of 3. So we keep hitting the undo button until cell 6, 6 is restored. Cell 6, 6 is restored. 
We choose 3 as the value of cell 6, 6 as stated in our algorithm notes. At this point, we would either solve the puzzle or do another round of improved Bowman's Bingo. So what have we learned? Counting the first two sets of strong and weak links indicates the correct solution path. Additional chaining sequences can be used to get beyond the current chaining sequence stalling. Additional puzzle solving techniques can be used for creating group node strong links in our chaining sequences. And improved Bowman's can be used to solve ultra extreme puzzles. This completes the Exodoku training video number 103. Please support the Exodoku by purchasing one of my books. Thank you for watching.